Okay, she was not planning on doing a video today, but I happened to see this article that was about how there's a contest held for people whose manuscripts have horrible beginnings. And um, I didn't read too much into it because I wanted this to be kind of more real and more natural. So I just, I got home, put up the camera, and that's where we are. So I don't, my hair, I, I haven't washed my hair. I'm not as, I just don't feel my best, but you know, the internet never sleeps. So why the heck should I? <laughs> just kidding. I set healthy boundaries for myself. Yeah, so it's an article from book. Actually, I should record my screen. Hold on a second. This is called the first worst lines in literature. <laughs> they have a contest for this. It's called the L Little Litten Contest. I feel like I pronounced that right, but the spelling in the like sound of the word just doesn't rhyme. So um, what, that's a really obnoxious way of saying that I hope I said that right. What is the Little Litten Contest? According to this website, they ask for entries of the opening sentences of the worst novel imaginable. I love this so much. And I guess how this started is it came from this guy named Edward George B Bulwer, Bu Bu not Bueller, Bulwer Lytton's God, and he had a novel from the year 1830 called Paul Clifford. It is the classic opening. That is the example that all of our English teachers use for how to not start a novel, which is, it was a dark and stormy night. Are you kidding me? That is the greatest line in literature. How can you say that? Because no one starts their novels like that. Show don't tell, right? That's like the golden rule in all of writing. That's what our, well, maybe some of our English teachers said, but if you're a writer, if you're an author, especially if you do fiction, you'll know the golden rule is show don't tell. However, this particular line is the more milder version of some of these entries people have gotten more creative at this game of atrocities i really like how they describe that <laughs> this contest gets thousands of entries per year i would pay money to be one of those judges okay first one here it was love at first sight he was tall and broad-shouldered with a dimpled smile twinkling green eyes and in keeping with his combination of statistically unlikely but deeply alluring features type ab blood in that condition where cilantro tastes like soap What? I'm I'm with it. I'm with it. Tall, dark, handsome, A B blood. What does that have? Okay. And this where what that condition where cilantro tastes like soap. The specificity is off the charts, dude. Oh my god. Okay. Outside of the categories, there is the grand prize winner. She was a beautiful woman. More specifically, she was the kind of beautiful woman who had an hour-long skincare routine that made her look either ethereal or like a glazed donut, depending on how attracted to her you were. I just don't think that's the worst one out there. The cilantro one is, I think, that that was the low point. What's that line? Hold on a minute. What's that line from Notting Hill when Julia Roberts says, yeah, I think the I think the apricot and honey thing was the low point. I think the AB blood type and cilantro tasting like soap was a low point. I still, that one was pretty bad. It was a sunny day in Los Angeles, hot and bright, and I was in my office playing ma mahjong against myself and losing when she walked in 120 pounds of dynamite, a blonde with legs that began at her ankles and ended in trouble. <laughs> I was not expect. I was not expecting that. Legs that began at her ankles, which is very typical for for anyone's pair of legs, and ended in trouble. My face just got really hot. Not because I'm blushing. I'm just. I. <laughs> it just caught me off guard. I like that one. I think that one is my favorite one so far. It's a classic. She muttered, and she flicked the hair from the old fur coat purchased from eBay for sixty-eight dollars plus overnight shipping for the purpose of this very moment. When she stuck out her hip, pulled the trigger, and shot him in that stupid face of his. Listen. If you're gonna shoot someone in their stupid face, at least do it wearing a fur coat. That's all I'm saying. This one's from Steven. He was a sto stolid, stolid? I feel like that's a combination of two words and I don't know how to say it, hold on. Stolid. Stolid, okay. This is a calm, dependable person showing little emotion or animation. Okay, so serious, got it. He was a stolid man, prone to excessive and extended bursts of emotionlessness. But when Maurice arrived, he loved with the passion of a dog itching its face against the grain of a firm pile carpet. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one. Okay. 
okay? <laughs> Everyone's got something. The air conditioner hummed like an oversized bear eating a large salmon he'd fished out of the water. And if you've never heard of an oversized bear eating a salmon, just imagine an air conditioner humming and you'll know. Hold on, hold on. I feel like I have to be fully present to read this sentence. The air conditioner, which is the subject of the sentence, the air conditioner hummed like an oversized bear eating a large salmon. And if you've never heard an oversized bear eating salmon, just imagine an air conditioner humming and you'll know. Okay, you know what this reminds me of? It's like trying to draw a circle with your not dominant hand and it comes out all warbly looking. It's a full circle moment where it starts with air conditioner, bear, back to air conditioner, but I'm just saying the lines are a little bit warbly around the sides. It's the kind of feeling that it gives me. Oh God, okay. I like this. I don't like this, and I like this, and I love it all at the same time, okay? Old man Buckman had been murdering and dismembering teenagers in our town for years and getting away with it, and it's important to emphasize this right up front because young readers like you have painfully short attention spans, and unless a story grabs you right off the bat, you'll be back on your video games or phones or skateboards in the blink of an eye. I feel like this guy has some pent up passive aggression vibes. Like you kids on your screen, you don't look at anything for more than a minute. So here's a story where I kind of sneak that in right here. People who have short attention spans don't pick up books, like maybe a little novelette or a little short story. But if, if you're not into reading books, you either listen to them or buy them and then pile them up like I sometimes do. The snow scattered like fair Parmesan from God's own shaker, drifting down lightly to cling to our squirming spaghetti skin beneath robes of tomato puree, making no distinction between the holy and the white or tagliatelle and bucatini among us. This guy really wants to be a chef. <laughs> Squirming spaghetti skin. Oof, that's a little too Buffalo Bill for me. I don't know. I don't know. It's a little Dahmer. I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I'm not into it. <laughs> God, would you please get your tentacles off my stu- Oh, I thought she was speaking to God about getting- <laughs> Let me start it. This is- God, would you please get your tentacles off my stomach? I uttered as Forrest groaned and slithered away from my bed. I swear, if anyone ever finds out I am dating an, op an octopus, it will be social suicide. Yep, a lecherous sunrise flaunted itself over a flatulent sea, ripping the obsidian bodice of night asunder, asunder with its rapacious fingers of gold, thus exposing her dusky bosom to the dawn's ogling stare. Flatulent sea, doesn't that mean that you're gassy? Hold on a minute. Suffering from or marked by an accumulation of gas in the elementary canal. You know what? Okay, hold on a minute. I'm just gonna say something real quick. If you feel the need to throw in a lot of really big words in one sentence, I feel like you are just not secure in yourself as a writer because I feel personally, my perspective, I feel like good writers are comfortable communicating an idea in simple language. I feel like that is the mark of a good writer. I don't want to feel like I'm reading a narrative academic book. I feel like if you got to use those big words, it's more of an ego boost rather than for the benefit of the reader. I feel like it's like eating a really rich truffle. It's like having the most decadent tiramisu you've ever had, but like five pieces all at once. It's just better sparingly. You just have a little taste of it and you're like, mm, that was decadent, that was just perfect. But I feel like with this guy, he's just like really wanting um, to show off. The, that, that's just my opinion. <laughs> wow, these were interesting. Now this is as far as this article went. Those are all the lines that it gave me, but it said that if I wanted to read more, I could check out their website. So, at, so if I don't have to do too much clicking, then we'll read a couple more, but if I gotta go digging for them, then we'll just end it here. So let's 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 check this out. Welcome to the best worst thing you'll read today. Our litany of winning entries. Okay, let's do 2010. 2010 was kind of a chaotic era, I feel like. So let's start there. 2010, in my opinion, is where like everything started to go downhill, and I don't remember much of anything. Through the verdant plains of North Umbria walked Waylon Oglethorpe, and as he walked, the clouds whispered his name. The birds of the air sang his praises, and the beasts of the fields, from smallest to greatest, said, there goes the most noble among men. In other words, a typical stroll for a schizophrenic ventriloquist with delusions of grandeur. 
That felt like a fever dream. Here's children's literature. Let's give that a go. Please, Mr. Fox, don't take your magic back to the forest. It is needed here in Twigsville, pleaded little Isabel. But Mr. Fox was unconcerned as he smugly loped back into the woods without answering a word, knowing well that his magic was only going to be used to make sure his forest would be annexed into the neighboring community of Leaftown, where the property values were much higher. <laughs> in Pixar or Disney or it's like, you know, any kind of show or movie where the parents have to sit through it, they plug in little quips here and there for the adults. I feel like it, it, it reminds me of that. And simultaneously, that one meme that I saw where in every story time a parent told his child, he said that the villain of the story was the president of the HOA. Um, I kind of like that. We'll just go ahead and stop it there, but I hope you got something out of this video. This was really fun. This was like my first kind of reaction video because I feel I wanted, I've been wanting to do them for a while, but I feel like it's kind of hard to find things like book slash publishing related that you can react to without having read all of it. But this is kind of a nice little change up. So anyway, if you're asking yourself, gee, Lauren, how can I enter myself and my god awful manuscript into this contest luckily for you there is some information that's available if you want to submit your own attempt at the worst opening line go to their submission page which i will drop that link in the description box below for you you can write as many words as you want but they suggest between 50 and 60 words which has the consumer i feel like is a pretty good range so just keep that in mind i don't see anything that says that you can't submit multiple times so if you've got multiple crappy starts to your book give it a go good luck i really want to read them okay if you submit it tell me and i really want to be on the lookout for yours if it, if it comes through but anyway i hope you enjoyed this video this is kind of a fun one to do i i want to do more content like this so if you enjoyed it yourself feel free to give it a like comment below one of the worst lines you think that you've ever come across in literature or you know just anything that you might have written i don't want to throw i don't want you to feel like you have to throw yourself under the bus but anyway i'm just curious to get your thoughts so with that all being said i hope you like this video and you can feel free to check me out on substack at lauren dot no what is it lauren erickson dot .com. and i'm also pretty active on instagram where i'm at lauren erickson but the o in my last name is a zero so enjoy the rest of your day hope you got some laughs and i'll see you next time